historic presidential election. We saw record numbers of voters cast their ballots and overall more than 5.2 million Michiganders voted in this election. That's more than in any election in our state in modern history. Of those who voted nearly two, two, two thirds or 3.3 million voted absentee, utilizing the mail or our secure local drop boxes or their local clerk's offices to return their ballots in time for it to be validated and counted. On election day itself, in-person voting was exceptionally smooth. Our polling locations were islands of calm, where citizens of all backgrounds and political affiliations observed the process and respected our voters' right to cast their votes free from threat or intimidation. And now here we are, 24 hours after the polls closed in Michigan, and I am pleased to announce that in Michigan, the process of tabulation is by and large complete, and counties are in the final stages of receiving reports from the last remaining jurisdictions as we speak. Now, this was far quicker than we expected. As you know, I had continuously estimated that it would take our election workers 80 hours to count every one of the nearly 3.3 million absentee ballots cast, based on the fact that it took 40 hours to count every one of them of the 1.6 million, which was about half that number of absentee ballots cast in our August primary. But just as they have done all year, our 1,500 local clerks and 83 county clerks worked with us to meet the extraordinary challenge of this high turnout election, preparing diligently by working with us to increase the capacity of their operations so that now we're able to deliver our unofficial results to the American public far, far sooner than we had estimated. The overall process was smooth, efficient, secure, and accurate. And behind the scenes, there was a a tremendous, extraordinary, heroic effort of our clerks and their staff who rose to meet every challenge thrown at them every step of the way and handled their work with diligence, grace, and a sincere commitment to ensuring that every vote was counted and every voice was heard. And now, as an unofficial the unofficial results are, ap are wrapping up, we now turn to the canvassing part of the process which involves a bipartisan process of checks and balances that will proceed over the next 13 days. As that stage begins in Michigan, and as we continue to see the results of this historic election unfold nationwide, I would caution everyone against spreading misinformation designed to, to further efforts to sow seeds of doubt about the integrity of our elections here in Michigan and throughout the country. Whether it's doctored images, staged demonstrations, false tweets or frivolous lawsuits, the purpose is all the same, to reduce the public's faith in our elections and their outcomes. But those efforts will not succeed. In Michigan, the process worked. Our system is secure, accurate, and anyone who tells you otherwise is attacking our democracy or unhappy with the results. We will continue to tell the truth and the true story of how in Michigan we successfully ran an election with record-breaking voter turnout in the midst of a pandemic. But we cannot do this alone. We need every voter and citizen to prepare to counter misinformation and disinformation that may continue to escalate in the days ahead. Stand up in support of our democracy. Join us in correcting misinformation and false allegations. Do not allow scare tactics and lies to win the day. Do not allow foreign or domestic actors to discredit our elections and attack our democracy. We need voters, members of the media, and elected officials and other leaders to stand vigilant with us to commit to reporting only verifiable, accurate information in the days ahead, not just about Michigan, but about every state in our country. And above all else, demonstrate your patriotism by standing up in support of the integrity of our elections. However the days ahead play out, the health of our nation and our democracy requires us to come together in respect of the will of our voters and the sanctity of our elections process. In Michigan, I am proud to confirm that all valid ballots and only valid ballots have been counted securely and accurately and that our election results reflect the will of the people. And now I'm happy to take questions uh, and thank you all again for your work tonight. And I wanna also take a moment as we begin to take questions to really emphasize and underscore the extraordinary amount of work that went into this election with over 1500 clerks all around our state and 83 county clerks who have worked diligently alongside tens of thousands of election workers to meet and exceed every expectation of this year's election. 
their work truly underscores that they are the not just the most valuable players in our democracy, but they are the heroes of our democracy. Uh, and they come from all backgrounds, all political parties. Uh, and I'm so grateful that because of them, we're able to stand here tonight uh, and show again results from Michigan that accurately reflect the will of the people. Thank you. And so first up, we have um, Jim Kurtzman with WXYZ. Good evening, Secretary. My question is on the uh, lawsuit from the Trump campaign. You just used in your opening statement frivolous lawsuits. Are you calling this lawsuit frivolous? And what are your thoughts uh, going into the court system where your directive on the ban on open carry guns was no pun intended shot down by the Court of Claims and the Michigan Court of Appeals? And the third part of this question is, do you think this is the lawsuit that the president intends to take to the United States Supreme Court? Um, yes, I do believe it's frivolous. Uh, and uh, I'm really gratified, as I mentioned, that our elections on Tuesday were smooth. Uh, and as I've said repeatedly and said repeatedly uh, going through this process, and as the Court of Appeals in the case you mentioned underscored, that voter intimidation in Michigan is illegal, uh, that brandishing a firearm or in any way threatening to harm our voters on the way to vote was illegal, and that we were ready to respond quickly and swiftly if any of those incidents occurred in Michigan. Now, thankfully, they didn't. And I'm really glad that voters listened to us, that they heard our call for peace and calm to make our precincts, as I mentioned, places where people were proud to go, proud to bring their kids to, to, to watch the democratic process in uh, action. Uh, that was the story of Tuesday. It was a story of voters from all uh, backgrounds and both sides of the aisle respecting the process, respecting each other, uh, and protecting everyone's right to vote. Uh, so uh, I'm, I'm grateful for that. Uh, and, you know, it, it's sort of starkly different from the, the use of the legal system to file frivolous claims as a way of um, uh, uh, sowing seeds of doubt among the public about the integrity of our elections. And so as my remarks just underscored, I think it's time that we all come together and not allow uh, frivolous lawsuits or any effort to misinform the public about the truth behind our elections uh, to succeed. Uh, and we will, and I will remain steadfastly determined in the days ahead to ensure we continue to correct false information and continue to tell the story, the extraordinary story of our elections here in Michigan this year of um, um, our clerks rising to the occasion all across the state, managing and overseeing a high turnout, record-breaking voter turnout election in the midst of a pandemic and still delivering results efficiently, effectively, securely, and accurately to the American people. Okay, next up will be Bethel Bond from the Detroit News. Hi, Secretary. I Hi, Beth. Hi, I had a quick question. Um, you mentioned at the beginning that the process of tabulation was nearly complete. Um, of the 100,000 that were outstanding this morning, how many are left that still need to be counted and in, in which communities do those still need to be counted? Uh, the tabulation process is complete. Now there's a final process of reporting out those results, finalizing them, reporting them out to the county. That's actually happening, as I mentioned, as we speak. Uh, so, you know, that, that, but I wanted to emphasize that the tabulation, particularly in the communities I mentioned earlier, uh, has been completed and is in the final stages of um, uh, being prepared to be published uh, and, uh, and again, uh, providing that full and unofficial tabulation so that we can now move into the canvassing process, moving towards that official tabulation in the 13 days ahead. Okay, next will be um, Taylor Gazormo from Analyze. Hi, Secretary Benson, thanks for taking my question. Sure. Uh, I wanted to ask um, about kind of what happened down at the TCF Center today. Um, you mentioned some things might be uh, staged for misinformation. Is that what you were referring to? And, and uh, I guess, what do you make about some of the complaints they had? And, and were, are they valid or not? Uh, thanks for the question. I think what we saw at TCF Center uh, from the moment, uh, really the pre-processing pre -processing began on Monday up through tonight uh, was, you know, by and large, a transparent process where representatives were able to observe uh, the process and, uh, and it proceeded efficiently and with integrity. Uh, and as for the folks who showed up in the late hours uh, outside uh, to, you know, cause a, a lot of distraction uh, and uh, make a lot of noise, I mean, I'll just say if they thought they were going to intimidate or stop anyone from doing their job inside the TCF Center, then they don't know Detroit. Okay, next is Annie Grayer with CNN. 
Hi, Secretary Benson. Thanks for taking the time. Um, going back to the lawsuit that the president filed uh, in Michigan today, you know, the claim that the president's making is that ballots were counted at absentee counting boards without bipartisan teams or allowing challengers to observe the process. I wanted you, you to respond to that specific claim and if you could uh, briefly walk through the process of what those bipartisan teams are, are meant to do. Well, I called it a frivolous lawsuit without merit because that's what it is. Uh, and so, you know, the litigation is ongoing. We'll let the process play out and respect the process. Uh, but what I can say with confidence is I've already emphasized that, that is that the absentee ballot tabulation process, not just in TCF, but all throughout the state of Michigan was efficient, transparent, secure, uh, and methodical. Uh, workers worked at dot every I, cross every T, uh, and take great pride in the important work they all knew that they were doing. Uh, and I'm uh, you know, proud to stand before you tonight and say that they finished their results and finished their work significantly more efficiently uh, than we had originally predicted. And that's really a, a reflection of the process working. Uh, and I'm you know, proud to stand by it. And I'm proud to defend it and, and really proud of the integrity uh, that flowed through the process every step of the way. Okay, next we have Jacob Hansford from Hi, uh, Secretary Benson. Um, Hi. I, um, we saw on the Kalamazoo County election results site that they were advertising their results as not including absentees. Do you, do you have an understanding of kind of what's going on there? I know the tabulation is finished and they're in the process of finalizing everything. And uh, as that process continues, which again, really involves a lot of checks and balances to make sure before results once tabulated are ready to be published. Uh, there's you know, a, it's a number of bookkeeping things that they need to do, especially to prepare to secure uh, any element of the process for the days ahead and for that official canvassing process, which is about to begin. So that's the moment they're now in. That's what you're seeing there. Uh, and you know, they're, they're again, working as we speak to finalize that process, but the actual tabulation has been completed. Okay, next we have Mark Cabot from the Oakland Press. Hi, Mark. Hi, Secretary. Can you hear me? Yep. Just a few days ago, you and the governor were talking about having final unofficial results in by Friday. I mean, we're two days ahead of schedule here. What are some of the main factors you would point to that contribute to having these unofficial results in much quicker than Friday? Well, as I mentioned, we set that estimate, which would have been about 80 hours from the moment we started tabulating ballots to through Friday when we finished, based on the fact that in August, it took us 40 hours statewide to process and tabulate 1.6 million absentee ballots. So we knew we were on track to have twice that many, or about 3.2, 3.3 going into this election. And so we estimated it would take twice as long to tabulate those ballots. Now we focused on making three changes since the August primary, two of which we were able to do, one of which we asked the legislature to do and they did as you all know. Uh, but those two things we did were, number one, we increased the number of high-speed ballot tabulators in many communities, uh, in some cases doubling or, or tripling the number of ballot tabulators they had on hand, as well as high-speed envelope openers and other technology. And then secondly, we increased the number of people that were able to be hired, uh, again, you know, with that sort of protecting the, the, the requirement to have bipartisan teams evaluating the process, uh, but also making sure we had more people on hand to move the process even more efficiently. Now, the third thing we needed was more time because you can increase the number of machines, increase the number of people, but it, we also would love, love to have more time. Of course, the Bipartisan Policy Center recommends seven days. When we look over the past uh, 24 hours, those states like Florida or Ohio who are able to report their absentee ballot counts quite efficiently were states that allowed the pre-processing and in some cases the tabulation of ballots uh, voted absentee prior to election day. And now when you look at the states remaining to tabulate their absentee ballots, you, there are states like Michigan or Pennsylvania or we're not to be able to begin that tabulation until after the polls open. Now, notably, the legislature did give 51 communities about 10 hours on Monday to begin pre-processing. And as we checked in with those communities throughout the day on Monday, we found that the real benefit there was, if anything, just kind of practicing everything out, setting everything out, getting smooth processes in place. So as soon as 7 a.m. hit on Tuesday, they were ready to go. So it was helpful uh, to have in some communities that extra time, and I'm sure that contributed to their efficient process as well. Uh, but moving forward, Forward, and I'll really defer to our clerks on this, but I anticipate we'll continue to ask for the legislature in future elections to give us more time in the front end, like so many other states, so that we are not always in the position of having to uh, make everyone wait as the full tabulation proceeds in the days that follow uh, the closing of the polls.
Okay, um, next is uh, Lee Aguilar from um, Bridge Detroit. Hi, I can't hear you. <laughs> Hello. Hi, Hi, I hear you now. Uh, the uh, chair of the Wayne County Board of Canvassers applied and was at the TCF Center. Uh, she had status as a uh, poll challenger, though she contends that she really was an observer and didn't act as a challenger. Is that, uh, given her role, is that uh, a, a conflict of interest or is there any law or that says that she, she may have crossed a line? Um, well, that's the first time I'm actually hearing about that. We'll, we'll certainly look into it. Uh, but that said, uh, we know that, as I mentioned, you know, transparency is something that's on our side. We support transparency. We support a lot of eyes on the process. We know observers and challengers observed the process uh, and were not really disruptive of the process, which was a good thing. Uh, and we know that the County Board of Canvassers, as well as the State Board of Canvassers, will have an important role to play in certifying uh, the ultimate official results in the days to follow. Uh, so so, you know, in, in recognizing that, certainly transparency and openness is important. Uh, and again, we welcome, as I've said throughout this process, uh, that openness. We, we welcome people who wish to observe the process. Uh, we simply do draw the line when, when, when those individuals become disruptive or otherwise try to interfere with the sanctity of our elections. Okay, we have no more hands raised, so I think with that. All right. Thank you, everyone. Uh, I hope everyone gets some rest, and, and I do hope everyone heeds our, our call uh, to really um, push back against the misinformation that we believe will escalate potentially in the days ahead uh, and really work with us to respect the will of the voters and bring our country and our state together in furtherance of our democracy and those who have spoken and will continue to hear their voices heard in the days ahead. Thank you.